March is not just one of the busiest months of the NFL calendar, it's also Women's History Month. Women working in and around the NFL is now commonplace in various roles, including coaching, scouting, and athletic trainers. But before all that, there was Sue Hillman and Enrico Iso. When Hillman joined the Steelers as an intern in 1997, she was the first woman to do so in the NFL in that capacity. Kind of a funny path because it was Rick Burkholder who was an assistant at Pittsburgh. Rick was an assistant for me at University of Arizona. I was the head athletic trainer at U of A, and Rick was one of my GAs, and then I put him on on full-time staff. Then when he left the University of Arizona and went to Pittsburgh Steelers, we kept in touch. And when I resigned my position as head athletic trainer at University of Arizona, Rick called me and said, now that you don't have to work Wildcat football, will you come and work Pittsburgh Steeler football? That was the start of my, my uh, NFL experience. Hillman's journey to Pittsburgh had actually started 20 years before joining the Steelers when she suffered an injury at Purdue University. It was actually a, a situation where I injured my knee. It was about 1974 and I was at Purdue University and in my rehab I had to go to the physical therapy department and I met Pinky Newell. Loved what he did and how he handled the various patients that came into physical therapy and I told him I wanted to do what he does. There was a female uh, physical therapist but no athletic training women. In 1975, I think it was, that they, Purdue hired their first female athletic trainer. My first year, I, I uh, volunteered with the physical therapy department, and the second year, I was able to volunteer with the newly named women's athletic trainer. After working her way to the top as head athletic trainer at the University of Arizona, Hillman was invited to Steelers training camp by head athletic trainer John Norwig. I came in, I was probably uh, late 30s, and most of the other interns were 20s. So I, I didn't have to feel my way around to earn my oats. Most of the athletes gave me an immediate uh, level of respect. I was able to fit in the, the team very quickly and easily. I was the first female named as uh, head athletic trainer in a uh, Division I college. I had suffered through about uh, 13 years of that breaking the glass ceiling, if you will. I had all that behind me, and, and this was just another, another part of life for me. It wasn't difficult at all. After being away from the team for almost two decades, Hillman was invited back to Steelers training camp in 2018. It was 19 years between the time that I worked uh, summer camps with John in the late 90s to 2018 when he asked me to come back. He asked me to come back and see how things had changed and boy had they changed. It's incredible to see how John has opened the door. John always has had a, a female on his staff since Arico and it's very heartwarming to see that we have broken that glass ceiling. Hopefully it continues to break open and disappear. You know, Sue Hillman, she is the actual, like, you know, legend of our profession. She was an athletic trainer when the Title IX was barely introduced in, like, 70s. I respect her so much. Just a few years after Hillman became the first female athletic training intern in the NFL, Ariko Iso's journey also led her to the Steelers, where she spent two summer internships before being hired as the first full-time female athletic trainer in the NFL. I think 99% um, of athletic trainers start to be in this profession being a, a, you know, athletes or different degree of athletes and injure yourself and I'm uh, no exception. Growing up in Tokyo but played uh, basketball in my junior high and high school and I torn ACL and I had a surgery and I got to spend two months in the hospital doing rehab and got to meet some collegiate athletes and a physical therapist and found out about the profession. So that's how I decided to come to the United States to become an athletic trainer. I was uh, working at the Portland State University as a head football athletic trainer, like a second year out of grad school, which is fairly rare. And then attended this uh, medical uh, seminar in San Francisco. And that's when uh, I met Mr. John Nowick first time. 
Meeting John Norwood not only led Iso to the Steelers, but it was her first time on the east side of the country. First time being in Pennsylvania was uh, driving to the uh, Lake Road, Pennsylvania. I started the training camp. All of a sudden you see the beautiful uh, cathedral and St. Vincent campus. First I stepped into the training room and John mentioned his philosophy and how he deal with this uh, professional sports. You know, Rico, these people might be bigger and faster and more talented, but when you are treating them as a medical professionals, you know, ankle is same ankle of Jerome Bettis to high school athletes or you are college athletes. Uh, anatomy is the same, so you just do your job, same as what you've been doing. So I did the two summer training camp, and then the Steelers decided to make this third position to be a full time. I think the people is biggest part. of Those learning experience is priceless. I think I realized that when I left Steelers, uh, the people and what I learned from each people, that's uh, I will treasure the rest of my life. I still get approached by some of the student athletic trainer who is, you know, early 20 and they find out I, I used to work in NFL and was the first time, first female to work in NFL, which is kind of foreign uh, subject to them, which is good because now many uh, females are working in the medical field to coaching, to scouting. I never really thought of a first female part as a big deal. And, I think the Steelers organization, Mr. Rooney, John and Ryan made me never felt like I'm the first or only female working in the environment. And I was supported by them and protected by them. And you do your job and don't think of your female male. That they try to find somebody who fits and who's best for that position. I think they are good at what they do, not just being female to add diversity, but they are the right person to do that job.